Today in the Battle Arena, Ant-Man versus Atom Smasher. Two of the biggest guys out there, literally, and they're going head to head. So who's coming out on top here? Let's find out. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danco. We do fight breakdowns every week, plus the occasional power ranking video like this one or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, well, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Now let's get to it. Scott Lang was a former thief who was struggling to find a job and be there for his daughter as a divorced dad. But thanks to Hank Pym hiring him for a heist, Scott took up the mantle of Ant-Man, became a superhero, joined the Avengers, fought alongside Captain America, saved the world, and even became a best-selling author funny all the little twists and turns that life can throw at you. Ant-Man's main power is the ability to change his size, either shrinking down to the size of an ant or growing up to gigantic sizes. While he's small, he doesn't lose any of his strength. In fact, he actually gets even stronger. Like now he can instantly knock people out with just one punch. All the force of a normal guy compacted into such a small point it's like getting hit with a bullet instead of a fist. And he's still pretty tough too. Like take attacks from Kang, kinda tough. But the biggest thing while Scott is small and ant-sized is probably his speed and agility. I mean, it's really, really hard to try and hit an ant. So it's really, really hard to try and hit Scott. And he's just real good at dodging attacks along with it. But while Ant-Man is powerful, he's confidently a street-level hero. Giant-Man, though? Well, he's one of the most powerful Avengers out there. He originally could only grow up to 65 feet tall, and being that large would quickly tire him out. But that changed as he just got more used to it. And now Scott can grow way, way bigger. He's strong enough to complete completely bust through buildings, just tear them down to the ground. He tore straight through Avengers headquarters as he grew and walked straight through a big city wall. He can throw around all sorts of aircraft with ease, just doing it again and again and again and can easily defeat some pretty serious enemies, like one-shotting a Leviathan and stomping on Cole Obsidian and taking him out. And again, Scott is pretty freaking tough while he's Giant Man. I mean, it took Iron Man, War Machine, Vision, and Spider-Man to take him down in Civil War. And Scott has only gotten more powerful since then. I mean, he can take blasts from Kang and hundreds and hundreds of shots from Kang's army. So yeah, I would say Giant Man is pretty tough. But you can't just have one guy who can go up to the size of a giant because there's also Atom Smasher. Al Rothstein is the nephew of the original Atom Smasher and joins up with the Justice Society of America where he determined to prove himself as a superhero. And man, he got thrown into the deep end right from the beginning, being asked to take on Black Adam and Sabak. And you know what? The kid did all right. Atom Smasher has the ability to change his molecular structure and grow to gigantic sizes. And when he does that, it gives him seriously increased strength and durability. Like I'm talking being strong enough to punch Black Adam and knock him out of the fight for a few seconds, then hold him down while he was trying to get back up. So yeah, I'm talking like strong, strong. He can do the same thing to Sabak too and he can even knock Hawkman out of the air. Although that one was definitely by accident. But Adam Smasher's greatest showing was picking up that gigantic statue. This statue is roughly just as big as the Washington Monument. It's been measured out to be tens of thousands of tons. And Adam Smasher is able to hold it up and set it down. So yeah, I'd say he's pretty strong. He's also real tough, like tough enough to take attacks from Sabak, and tough enough to take a punch from Black Adam square on the jaw. And sure, he was knocked out by it, 
But what can you really expect? It's still Black Adam. So just surviving one of his punches is enough to mention here. So who wins here? Who's the better big guy? Well, I think to really understand Adam Smasher, you gotta talk about Black Adam for a second. Basically just remember that this guy was being set up to be the direct equal for Superman himself. That's what The Rock was building up towards. Superman himself kind of mentioned that in the post credit scene. And it definitely played out that way, which is how he carried himself in the actual movie. Basically everything Superman can do, there's a good chance that Black Adam would have been able to do something similar. Just keep that in mind, because Adam Smasher is able to knock Black Adam out with a punch. Yeah, just for a few seconds, but that's still real impressive. Adam Smasher is able to take some absolutely massive explosions from Black Adam straight to the face. And I'm talking some absolutely massive explosions. And then of course, yeah, picking up that statue, easily tens of thousands of tons, maybe something like 80 to 90,000 tons. Basically, if you can scale to Black Adam even a little bit, you're an impressive hero. And Adam Smasher can definitely scale to Black Adam at least a bit. But after Quantumania, well, Ant-Man kinda transcended to a different scale altogether. Like Adam Smasher, he's roughly as big as a six to seven story building, right? Ant-Man can now grow up to the size where he's completely towering over those types of buildings. He's able to knock them down with just one hit. He's able to go up to a giant force field that's easily the size of multiple city blocks and holds up a gigantic ring that's pushing against him. Just from a size perspective, that ring is way, way bigger than the statue and it's pushing against Scott. Scott is still able to hold it up for a bit. Then with his fastball special, he's able to take down the shield completely. And that's just simple stuff like size and strength. Ant-Man outclasses Adam Smasher in a ton of other areas too. Like for starters, just skill and experience. Like this was Adam Smasher's first mission. Scott's been in the superhero game for a while, long enough to save the whole universe once or twice already. Adam Smasher can also only grow. Ant-Man can grow and shrink, meaning a ton of surprise attacks. Ant-Man is going to be able to easily dodge those big punches and kicks. This is the kind of versatility that Atom Smasher just doesn't have. Yeah, after Quantumania, this one became very, very easy for me. Ant-Man definitely wins. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're going to have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you wanna go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're gonna see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.